hello and welcome to our webinar, uh, KNX and Security, especially the security module, SCMS is today the topic. Yeah, my name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel. Um, I will conduct this uh, webinar as always together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, who is sitting opposite to me. Yeah, what will be our topic today? As already mentioned, uh, the security module, SCMS, um, is our yeah, main product today. Um, but we will start with a small introduction into uh, the topic KNX and security, very short only, followed by the security terminal a bit, which is part of the total solution. And uh, yeah, then we are concentrating on the security module, uh, SCMS, with yeah, all the functions, with also some, some parameters we would like to explain, and uh, also the most important uh, communication objects. We will show it uh, together with an example. And, and finally, we would like to show you yeah, a kind of practical demonstration with a real um, yeah, hardware behind together with the visualization software. So you can, can see also some functions uh, together with the security module live on our screen together with the uh, visualization software. Good, before we start, some um, small hints still. So we will send you later on a feedback email as always together with uh, yeah, the presentation itself is uh, the recorded file of the webinar, so you can see us again or listen to us again if you want. And um, yeah, at the end of the webinar, you will be linked to a kind of questionnaire um, with some small questions regarding our webinar, so uh, regarding security and KNX. And please uh, answer these questions, and you have also completed uh, the session. This would be nice. Um, on the lower right side, you see a chat window. Um, if you have any questions uh, in between during the webinar, uh, type in your questions. Send it to the host and presenter, please. So we try to answer your questions uh, during the webinar. If not possible, um, latest in the feedback email, we will give you a reply. Okay, so allow me to switch off uh, the video screen to improve uh, the performance of our um, data transmission here and um, but you will hear me of course and you can see also the presentation and more. Good, security module SCMS is a topic KNX and security uh, as a headline of course and um, as we know a lot of different functions can be uh, implemented with KNX and one could be KNX. Fully integrated means we can yeah, combine both uh, yeah, so solution security itself but all the other classical uh, building functions yeah, in one system with, which is very user friendly which gives you a, a lot of new functions and options let's say. So you see here on the left already some components uh, related to security and KNX. Uh, security terminal you see on the left side, um, then the security module, the third one, we'll come to this later, and some further accessories, non-KNX devices first of all, uh, you can connect to the total solution, Sirene flashlights, uh, safe key module for setting or unsetting an alarm system and some, some sensors down there. Yeah. So what are the typical applications um, using security? First of all, um, one part is of course the monitoring of the building um, yeah, regarding any uh, uh, unauthorized intrusion, intrusion um, by any person. So we monitor windows, doors, um, lock monitoring of doors is possible, window contacts can be connected, but also motion detectors to monitor inside the rooms um, if somebody is inside. But additionally, also technical alarms can be uh, integrated, like um, detection of, of, of water leakage, for example, or any, any other technical alarms like smoke or fire and, and also gas. Just a moment, I take a better pointer here. Good, so this is a typical solution we would like to have. And yeah, if you connect both security application plus classical building uh, functions like lighting control, heating, cooling, shutter blinds, you can, can have quite interesting uh, combined functions, let's say. So, the magnetic read contact of the window in use for security can be also used for um, yeah, shutting down heating or cooling in case of opening the window. Motion detectors, security based, can be used also for lighting control. Yeah? 
or in case of any technical uh, hazards, for example, any, any water leakage, you can switch off electrical circuits. Yeah? And, um, but al of course, if you also set our alarm system, you activate the alarm system, you can additionally activate or trigger functions in the KNX side, the classical KNX side, like uh, changing the set point of your, your heating or cooling system, go to a standby mode, for example, activating a time program for your shutters. So everything can be combined easily and uh, the custom has a very user-friendly solution with a lot of more options. Yeah. Or finally here an interesting application in case of any alarm. It's possible for example to, to open all shutters or blinds and um, yeah, switch on the light but not only switching maybe flashlight shall be uh, implemented. It's not, not a problem for KNX. Uh, so additional alarm light will be uh, visible then. Yeah. So a lot of options available because everything is integrated in one system. Yeah. As mentioned, we will concentrate on the security module today. Um, just a very few words about two other components we need, power supplies and also security uh, terminals. Um, but then, of course, our security module will be the main part. You see here at the end, new KNX security panel. Uh, what's this? <laughs> Not a topic today, but it will come in summer. So uh, we have planned to, to hold a webinar in July of this, for this new security panel, GMA 8.1. But not a topic today, coming soon. Have a look later on. Yeah, power supply, important part of a KNX system. Uh, at minimum, we have one, one KNX power supply necessary. Um, if you use KNX also for security applications, it's really recommended to use also an uninterruptible power supply. Means, in case of power failure, system is still running and uh, security functions are still guaranteed. Yeah. Depends on the situation, but in any country it can happen that power failure appears, uh, occurs, and then um, no function in security is not, of course, a good solution. So it's recommended to use our uh, uninterruptible KNX power supply. You see here the component itself, plus, yeah, we have different options for the battery behind. So we, we buffer directly via battery the KNX bus. And it's a fully free maintenance solution, so it will be automatically charged the battery. And in case of power failure, it will supply the KNX part. Um, different batteries up to 16 hours backup time is possible here. So this is for the KNX power supply, but we will see later on um, for some security components we need also 12 volt DC power supply. So 12 volt yeah, DC power network has to be uh, installed and um, the best way is to use the yellow and white wires of the KNX bus cable. Normally not in use and um, this could be used for low voltage power transmission like 12 volt. You need only the right power supply, we have also in our range. And also here, it's really, really, really recommended to use an uninterrupted power supply, means you have to connect a battery as again. The same principle as before. And um, this is our complete solution then, then for, the, for the power supply. Yeah. We see in one of the next slides a complete overview of the system, including these, these two power supplies. Okay, power supply is one thing. A second important part of a security solution with KNX is, um, yeah, what are the security terminals? Uh, security terminals, MTS or MTU, you see it here as a DIN rail device with eight or four channels, or as a decentralized component with two channels, or two zones, so called. Um, these components are necessary to connect the different sensors, conventional sensors with a contact behind, to our complete security solution with KNX. So any window, door contacts, uh, glass breakage sensors, uh, motion sensors, but also these technical sensors, smoke, fire or gas sensors, can be then easily connected to KNX via these security terminals. Uh, or here, water sensor as already mentioned, but also something like this, a panic button or emergency button, uh, if you need something like this in your, your house, um, can be used, a conventional one, and connected to such a security terminal. Yeah. So, 
it's a more or less uh, the right solution to connect all these sensors. We will see in the next slide that we use it for, for monitoring of the cabling. But there's also dedicated software inside for security application. I will come to this. Yeah, you see here the principle how to connect the different type of conventional alarm sensors or contacts from the alarm technology. Um, in principle, we need any potential free contacts, normally closed or normally open. It's uh, independent. Uh, we can use both. And in order to monitor the cabling between our security terminal and the sensor itself, we have normally an end-of-line resistor. And together with this end-of-line resistor, it's possible to monitor the cabling between the zone to, uh, security terminal and um, the sensors itself. So any interruption of the cable or any short circuit will be detected automatically. Increases the security of the system, uh, the performance of the system, so under guarantee this part is under control, let's say. Yeah, and if we talk about a zone, a zone uh, is normally not only one sensor, we, we, we group this depending on the local situation. For example, you can uh, group all window contacts and glass break sensor of one room to one, one zone linked to one of these inputs here. And the so next zone might be all motion detectors in the room and other zone might be the, the technical sensors, smoke detectors, for example. Yeah, and if you connect it to separate zones, you can also distinguish bet between these different zones. Important, for example, for a technical alarm, this has to be active all the time. Uh, any yeah, intrusion alarm sensors only if you are setting the alarm system. Yeah, if you look to the device a bit more in details, you see here the inputs. In this case, we have four zones or inputs to connect all these mentioned sensors or arming devices as well. Um, there are different solutions available. Um, yeah, down there at the uh, um, lower side, we have another three outputs, relay outputs, especially made for connecting signaling devices. So, for example, a siren and flashlight in a combination for outside alarming, so installed at the wall of the building outside, um, giving an acoustical or uh, optical alarm in case of yeah, any intrusion. Plus, if you want, in some cases, we need also a siren inside the building um, for internal alarming, first of all. Also possible to connect here to the third output. Yeah, and as a complete solution, you see here yeah, a kind of, of, of connection diagram together with other KNX devices. First of all, the heart of the system is the security terminal with sensors and, and, and alarming devices or also setting devices as discussed. And on the KNX side, what do we need? Of course, um, also any yeah, component to set and unset the alarm system, means to activate or deactivate the alarm system, at least for intrusion alarm monitoring necessary. So typically people have something like this, a touch panel like our Comfort Touch, with a coded page you can get assessed with the alarm part of your installation to check whether any window is still open or door is locked or not or unlocked and of course also the possibility here to set or unset the alarm. How to do this in, in practice we will explain a bit later in some more details. Yeah, but um, instead of the standard acoustical and optical alarm we can use also our telephone gateway for, for remote alarming, for quiet alarm. Uh, for instance, uh, with an SMS or an email, or also a voice message can be sent. Yeah, and, and furthermore, of course, we have our other KNX devices for all the other functions, like lighting, blinds, heating, cooling, uh, whatever you want. Switching any loads, for example. So, this in total is a one solution, including KNX, based on only on the security terminal. So. Now we come slowly to the security uh, module. If you need only one security terminal with up to eight zones, then you can work standalone with the solution. In principle, all the functions you need for a security system is, are implemented here, can be activated, can be programmed via the software, it will work. If you need more zones than eight, means more than one security terminal. You can install it, no problem. But then you need additionally the security module. 
So more than one security terminal cannot work standalone anymore. So we have to to uh, yeah, enhance the solution by uh, this or with this security module. In this case, security terminals are more or less only inputs. The software functions are not used anymore. The real intelligence, the logic, the alarm logic is then part of the security module. And let's have a look to the solution. We see it here right now. So again, security terminal, but you see more than one. You can combine our three types. Um, first of all, we can connect up to 64 uh, zones later on, we will see. Um, but we will discuss it a bit later. Yeah, and here our security module as a heart of the system, also a KNX device, of course, connected to KNX. And this device is now able to communicate with the security terminals. And this together is now a complete extended uh, security solution based on KNX. The rest is the same as before. Our sensors connected to security terminals, not different. Alarming as well. Uh, mon um, um, operation, the same as before, including telephone gateway and, of course, also the other devices. Yeah. So important to keep in your mind, one security terminal, okay, possible. More than one security terminal necessary, you need the security module. It's a clear uh, situation. Yeah, let's have a look to a, a bit more comprehensive display of the situation, the solution. Um, and here you can see also our power supplies additionally. So here the KNX power supply. Green line is a KNX bus and the red line shows a 12 volt DC network. You see we need it for some components. For example, for the security terminal we need 12 volt for an alarming device like Sirene or strobe light, we need 12 volt. Our telephone gateway can be connected to 12 volt, but also to 230 volt. But if we use our 12 volt power supply here, this with battery behind, so we can buffer also the 12 volt, then the whole system is buffered and uh, will work also in case of mains failure. Okay, so, so uh, this way it could look like and uh, let's come now a bit more to, to some more details of the security module itself. Um, so it provides a complete alarm logic. Um, so everything is inside, we can program and Jürgen will show you later on some, some parameters, some option. It's really powerful and gives you a lot of options. Yeah? So setting unsetting is a standard function in the security system. Um, Alarming as well, so if anything happens in the system, of course, an alarm has to be sent out. We can have different alarm sensors. Remember, security uh, sensors for intrusion alarm or technical alarms, we can evaluate this, we can distinguish between these sensors. So different sensors can cause also different alarms. Yeah. Target projects of our KNX security solution, also with the security module, are smaller or medium-sized buildings. Very often in, in the private sector, so residential buildings, sometimes also co uh, smaller commercial projects. So this is our target market where KNX is, is part of the solution and people ask for a powerful security solution as well. Yeah. Um, if you use a security module, you have some advantages compared uh, with a standalone solution of the security terminal. For example, um, yeah, real text messages can be sent, uh, very user friendly and um, yeah, can be displayed on, on a touch panel. So it's a bit more, let me say, uh, end user oriented than also. Uh, furthermore, we have some indications here, a relay and a buzzer plus an LED, but I will explain it in the next slide. So here is a relay contact, freely programmable. You will see later on in the parameters what to do with this um, alarm. LED shows an alarm here, then we have an indication is the system set or unset and is it uh, uh, okay the component is working or is any fault can be shown with this LED here as well. Yeah. And the buzzer is a not very noisy, let me say, uh, sound you can hear but also programmable for example during the commissioning phase you can uh, program it as, uh, as an alarm output, so in case of alarm it will sound and um, it gives you 
some options for, for commissioning them. So hardware is not very, let me say, uh, yeah, excited here. You see, don't see so much. It's a more software, let me say, uh, components. Yeah, as mentioned, 64 zones can be connected. Um, different kind of zones can be distinguished. I mentioned already, for example, if you connect motion detectors, um, it's so-called internal protection. Um, or external, let me say, uh, sensors like a magnet read contact. We come to this external internal setting later on. You can connect an emergency call button, for example, uh, or temper contacts. What is this? Um, some devices, for example, the flashlight, the siren, uh, will be monitored as well regarding any an author, unauthorized opening. For example, somebody tries to open to, to, to damage the, 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 uh, the case, the housing of this siren, uh, there will be a contact, yeah, detects this situation and can send also an alarm. Uh, there's a monitoring of a piece of hardware itself regarding opening. Yeah, technical alarms, two different ones can be distinguished. Any, any f fault errors, uh, like the power supply failure, for example, the uh, uninterrupted power supply with a contact behind linked to a binary input can be monitored, things like this. Um, yeah, zones can be disabled. Uh, what does it mean? So we can, uh, let's, let's not say switch off the zones, but we take it out of the alarm logic. So in case of, of any zone, like your, your window and your sleeping room in summer, you would like to disable. So you can still open this during the night without any any more functions, so you can also set your alarm system, though the window is open, so we disable it from the alarm logic, let's say, uh, but it's still connected to the system. Yeah, if uh, we talk about the logic, the alarm logic of a real alarm system, you find here a standard alarming matrix. What does it mean? Um, depending on different different triggered sensors and different states of your system. Is it unset? Is it internally set or externally set? Um, different kind of alarms can be sent out. Yeah. So we distinguish between internal and external alarm, panic alarm, personal attack, somebody tries to, to enter the building but you are at home, technical alarms like smoke or fire or water, it's a totally different situation. Um, so we can also send out different alarms. And this alarming matrix is a recommendation, typically used, um, but thanks to our flexibility, we can change this. Yeah. So let's take an example here, the technical sensor. What is it? Maybe a smoke detector. Independent of the state of your alarm system, it should be active all the time and send out an alarm. So also if it's unset, the alarm system, um, a fire in your house is, of course, any time a dangerous situation and there should be sent out an alarm immediately. Yeah. But for internal protection, what does it mean? Um, um, no motion detectors are uh, inside the alarm logic right now. I'm still at home, so I activate internally my alarm system. So um, if it's internally set, the system motion detectors are not active. Nothing happens, yeah. of course. Uh, if somebody tries to enter the building via the window, then an external alarm will be sent out. Yeah. So, again, it can be changed. L uh, later on, Jürgen will give you uh, or show you the parameter accordingly. Yeah, setting already discussed a bit, or uh, mentioned already. Uh, external and, 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 and internal setting is a topic here. So, external setting means I'm not at home. Everything will be activated, including the motion detectors. Internal setting means uh, only peripheral sensors, but no motion detectors. Direct setting means um, I set my alarm system outside, so I leave completely the building. I have any setting divided outside, so if I lock the door, I can set immediately, directly uh, my system. Sometimes you have no uh, setting device outside, but you have your touch panel inside the building where you would like to set your alarm system. So, um, possible with a so-called delayed setting. And in this case, you have yeah, the chance to set your device, but within a certain period, you have to leave your house, you have to lock the door, 
and then finally the system will be set. But there are also some options how to handle this. Uh, for example, if you, for, you, do, uh, you are not able to, to leave the house in this period you have programmed, what happens then in such a case? Either here we will show you a bit in the parameters what are the options. Yeah? Good. Um, we can use not only one uh, setting device. Uh, we will just have an example. Um, so it's possible you have many, maybe many doors uh, in your house and different setting devices. And uh, that's possible as well. Also, we can extend the solution with more than one setting area. What does it mean? I will explain in the next slide. But then we need more security modules uh, for each area one. And this is visible here right now. For example, if you have a unit building with the main part, house, apartment, whatever, and there's a sub-area, like an office room here. So what is the, the task here? Uh, the apartment, the main area, can only be set if the office has been set as well. Uh, so there's a, a relation between these two areas. Uh, and first of all, you have to set here, and then you can set here. You cannot leave your apartment without setting the office. Consequence is that we need for each of these uh, parts of your you build these areas uh, to or each for each one uh, one security module. But this option we have. Yeah, alarming. Also a, a bit discussed. Uh, what can you do? External siren or strobe light. Internal siren uh, could be used. Telephone gateway. Yeah for quiet alarm. And in case of any state, not only alarm, but also um, set or unset situation, we can activate scenes on KNX and trigger any other functions. Uh, we discussed already a bit. So you leave your house, you set externally, and air conditioning or heating system goes to standby mode, for example. Uh, you will see it later on as well in the, in the parameters or in the application itself. Yeah, I mentioned already the option with the security module to, to send out text, yeah, texts via KNX, so-called 14-byte communication object. It's the biggest one we have in our, Canes, our KNX um, uh, communication objects. And um, yeah, different information can be sent with a real text you can program. So maybe there haven't, haven't any alarm. So you can see directly on your display, maybe on your touch panel, which kind of alarm, yeah, which detector was involved. Date and time will be uh, um, given to you as well. When did it happen? And um, not only text will be sent, but also these, yeah, events will be stored in the internal memory of the component. Up to 250 list entries are available. So you can read out also later what happened in the past, uh, up to 250, easily also with uh, KNX touch panel possible. Uh, so you see, very user friendly. That's a solution you have only with the security module, not alone with the security terminals. Yeah, but also simple one bit state information or status information are possible, uh, just a yes or no information. Um, the state of, of the zones, is it triggered or not, uh, is the system set or unset, which kind of alarm maybe appeared here. Yeah? For example, here you see on the right, for each kind of alarm there is an indication and um, could be also used. And furthermore, for some powerful visualizations behind, a status byte, 8-bit status byte with yeah, a lot of information in one telegram uh, is available. 64 zones can be connected. How to do? You have your security module as the heart of the system. And from different security terminals, um, we assign the zones to the security module, up to 64. And behind all the zones, you have any sensors or setting devices, whatever. Security module is a master, is handling the whole logic and sending out alarms and receives setting and unsetting and, and other commands. Um, so it's linked together and again the security terminals are only more or less inputs with monitored cabling. So 64 zones should be enough for most of the projects. Um, 
we'd be targeting with such a solution. But if you need more, it's possible. <laughs> Up to 512 zones are possible. In this case, you use again the security module, but further modules as a slave, so master-slave behavior we have here. And the total solution here, you can see, can interact with each other and you extend it to 512 zones, if you want, if necessary. Okay, Jürgen, ever seen such a solution with more than 64 zones? <laughs> okay, that might happen, we will see. Yeah, it's possible. Good, yeah, direct setting and just a small explanation without delay. So you have your setting device like this one here uh, outside your building um, for direct setting. Means your setting device sends a setting request to the security module. Security module checks is everything fine means everything uh, uh, okay to to allow the setting of the system means all windows closed all door locks nobody inside the building anymore if yes system will be set if not error messages messages will be sent back and uh, yeah you have to check in your house again what's not correct what uh, avoids any any setting yeah um, to, to get a setting confirmation, also KNX gives you a good option. Maybe you switch on the outside light for some seconds to confirm that the alarm system was uh, was set correctly. Uh, and then it goes off again. And so it's a simple way of indicating system was set successfully. Yeah, delayed setting, uh, unsetting means I use any internal for example, touch panel, and uh, in such a case, I have a certain time to leave the building, and by locking the door, or uh, after this time, automatically the system will be set. The options we have here um, will be explained a bit later together with the application software. Well, it's this very nice solution, and many people ask for this delayed setting. It's very often used in projects. Yeah, I would stop here, but not the complete webinar. Jürgen will come now and we'll explain a bit about the application together with the ETS, followed by yeah, a practical demonstration. Then. Hello and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I would like to show you some ETS parameters of the security module, how you assign group addresses between a security terminal and a security module, and I show you a small demonstration about a small KNX solution made of security terminals and security modules. So now let's start with the first page of the ETS parameters. Yeah, we have here some general, the, the first page is general. Uh, the very first important parameter is how we would like to use our security module. Uh, when we have only one security module, uh, then this security module is the master. A master can evaluate up to 64 different zones. When you need more than one security module, we can have up to eight security modules as slaves. Then we have to choose the parameter slave and our central device is the master. Then we have to use the parameter master. But now we have only a small apartment, maximum 64 zones. Then we use here the mode as a master. So the next page, uh, <coughs> we can set the function of our security module. Uh, we have a possibility that the security module sends, for example, cyclically every 60 seconds, a kind of live, uh, live signals. Uh, if we have a visualization system or other control unit which monitors uh, the, uh, uh, our security module, if it's still connected to KNX and working. So here we can see the parameters of the relay output. We have a relay with six amps on board. Yeah, we have some basic functions for switching. Yeah, we can uh, also set the parameters what should happen when we have bus voltage failure or bus voltage recovery and how we want to use this relay. It is possible to control it via a group address, via a standard communication object. Yeah, then we have to use the parameter control via object, then we can assign a group address, absolutely maybe independent our security function. Or we can set here this parameter, external setting, internal setting, yeah, then we need then we use an internal function. It's not necessary to assign a group address. Yeah, we can select here maybe this parameter, internal siren, and then the relay switched every time 
uh, when the system, uh, when the security module sends the command internal alarm. So when you want to use the 14 byte text uh, text messages, yeah, then you have to activate these parameters here. Yes, then we get a lot of 14 byte uh, communication objects to send text messages or to read out, for example, the event log. So the next parameter window is about the setting and the unsetting. Uh, the first question here, how we would like to set our system normal. Normal means we have the arming device outside the building yeah, and when we send uh, the setting request, the logical one, go external set and then the security module goes absolutely at the same time at once external set, when it is ready to set. This is quite common used maybe here in, in Germany. Outside the building, when you have no arming, excuse me, when you have no arming device outside the building, uh, you would like to start the, the setting uh, function inside the building, then you can choose the parameter delayed. Delayed means you have inside the building a sensor or a touch panel uh, and you send the command go external set to the security module and then a time delay starts, uh, the so-called setting delay. Setting delay means send a command, a request, go external set and then you have time, about this time here, 60 seconds to leave the building and after this 60 seconds the system goes external set. The same way when we come back, uh, we open our door, the first sensor at the door, maybe the magnetic read contact or the motion detector in the entrance area, detects the person and then uh, the so-called alarm time uh, starts the alarm time. Maybe you can use the same time here 60 seconds, and then you have time to go to the arming device and unset the security module. Uh, when no one unset the system between this time here, then we get a classical, uh, a typical external alarm because someone opens the door and the security, term, uh, security module does not know is it the owner of the building or is it an intruder. So and so sometimes false alarm can happen when someone comes at home, opens the door, and he forgets to answer the system. Maybe he don't use, uh, he don't know the pin code or the time here elapsed, and then we get a false alarm. <coughs> so here is also a very nice parameter, uh, a little bit complicated. It sounds complicated. On closing a detector, peripheral protection delayed running setting delay. Oh, what does it mean? Um, we have the possibility uh, to say set the system. What does it mean? We leave our building inside, we press our button and we send a request to the system go external set. And so we have a time slot about 60 seconds. You go outside the building, you close the door and with closing the door the magnetic read contact sends the command to the security module and then the system goes set at once. Not after this time. Yeah, it's a kind of, of slot, a time slot. Now when you close the door, then the system goes set at once. I think this makes, time, makes sense because when the system goes set with closing the door, you can switch on the outside, the lights or a, a small siren or buzzer. Yeah, then you know, yes, with closing the door, my system goes really set. But when you start the time here, the setting delay time, 60 seconds, yeah, and you don't close the door or the time elapsed, what should happen? Yeah, when the time is, is run out, then you can set here this parameter, your system should stay unset and send the error message via the KNX. This is a one bit signal yeah, and you can maybe switch on another light or do something else. <clears throat> so here's the parameter of our setting confirmation. So we have a communication object. When you set the system and it was successful, the system goes set, then we have the object uh, external setting confirmation and then about three seconds we have the logical one to switch on maybe the outside lights as a kind of confirmation. And here is the time for the error signal when we want to set a system and the system was not ready to set, yeah, then the security module sends this, group, uh, this communication object with the group address to the bus and you get also information yeah, that the system is still unset and there was an error. So now when you have enabled the text, the 14 byte characters, yeah, then you can uh, choose pre-configured text description here in different languages, for example English, Italian, French and so on or German. 
Yeah, and when we set our system via the KNX, via the 14 byte text, uh, text description, is sent here the word unset, ready, or externally set. Yeah, this is pre configured when you choose the language here, or you uh, use Edible, then you can use your own language, or you can change here this text description. These are 14 maximum 14 characters really sent via the KNX bus to your display or to your visualization or something. <clears throat> in the menu alarm general we can set some parameters about the alarm behavior for example our siren our external siren which is installed outside the building uh, should be limited uh, it's recommended to use here the time maximum three minutes you can do it longer or shorter but it is really a practical experience to use here the maximum time of the siren three minutes and not longer the strobe light, the flashlight, is still on until you unset the system and make a reset. But the siren should be limited. The internal siren maybe can be also limited yeah, in the time. Yes or no, what you want. You can send cyclically also the alarms when you want. Yeah, such things are still possible. <coughs> so the alarm behavior here, uh, what should happen when we have an internal alarm or a water <coughs> sensor makes an alarm? Yeah, we can use here the standard, like Thorsten explained you the alarm matrix, or you can change the alarm behavior. We also recommend to use the standard behavior, for example a water sensor makes only water alarm or internal alarm, and uh, he does not switch on the siren outside. The siren outside is only a kind of external alarming to show there's an intrusion alarm. You can do it, but we prefer to say use the standard alarm behavior of the security module. <clears throat> so on the next page we can we can enable our inputs, our so-called zones, the security module. We can maximum evaluate up to 64 zones and with these parameters you can enable every time up to 16 zones. It is also possible to <clears throat> to monitor the signal from the security terminals yeah, about uh, this time here, 60 seconds. Yeah, but then the security terminal has to send the status of the input cyclically in this time. When you want to disable some zones, yeah, some inputs, then you can do it via this parameter, detector inputs can be disabled. Yeah, like in the summer you want to open some windows in your master bedroom or something else, yeah, then you can disable these zones by sending a one bit group address to a disabled group and then all zones which belongs to this disabled group are still switched off. <coughs> so let's go to the next one, to the scenes. With this parameter scenes we can call our typical 8-bit scenes in our KNX world. Like we do it in a switch actuator, shutter actuator or a DALI gateway, what else? You can specify here the number of the scene, for example, when we internal set our system, call scene number 5, yeah, or we have, for example, an alarm, intrusion alarm, then we call scene number 19, yeah, and switch all on the lights, drive the shutters up, and something else like you want. So, and now here we have uh, the possibility to set the behavior of our zones, our inputs, maximum we have 64, we start here with the first input, the first zone. Yeah. At first we have to specify what is it, which kind of sensor yeah, is used here in our input number one or the zone number one. Yeah. We can uh, select here between the menu, is it for example an intrusion detector for peripheral protection, that means peripheral, this is a magnetic read contact or glass breaking detector, vibration detector for something, uh, for example, a device which monitors uh, the peripheral uh, of our building. Or is it a sensor for internal protection, like a typical motion detector, yeah? Or, for example, is it a delayed sensor? When we have, when we use the delayed setting and unsetting from inside the building, then all the sensors in the entrance area from the arming device, your touch panel, or your sensor, yeah, until you leave the building, must be a delayed sensor, like the magnetic read contact at the entrance door, or here this intrusion detector, internal protection delayed. This is, for example, the motion detector in the entrance area. Or is it a tamper contact? Yeah, which monitors the housing of the siren which is installed outside yeah, or is it a panic detector yeah, for personal alarm 
or is it a technical sensor? We have two possibilities. One can be technical alarm one, a water alarm sensor, technical alarm two, a smoke detector or something. So you have to select the type of each of our maximum 64 inputs and so on. And depending on this parameter, the security module is doing the alarming. Additionally, you can write here maximum 14 bytes character, a short description, the name of the detector or the zone, like here motion detector, kitchen, yeah, or here water in the cellar. And this text is uh, transmitted via the KNX bus and is also stored in the event log. So later when you read out the event log of the security module, then you get this text description here. So it makes really sense to write here a good description. When you want to uh, disable, for example, this sensor here, yeah, then you have the possibility to say, okay, my input number one belongs to a disable group, like here the disable group four. Yeah, and also other inputs can be also linked to the same disable group. And via one bit telegram later, we can disable this group number four, and then all sensors which are linked to this disable group four are switched off and are not evaluated by the security module, and then they make no alarm. Good, let's have a look at the ETS communication objects. Um, inside the security module, we have an event log, like in a real intuition alarm panel. Uh, generally speaking, the KNIC security module is a really standalone intrusion alarm panel with all the features, yeah? but all information happens via the KNIC bus. So we have inside an uh, event log. In the event log, the last 250 events are stored. Uh, when the system was set, unset, or an, uh, one sensor made an alarm, which kind, uh, what kind of uh, alarm it was, water alarm, intrusion alarm, and including the time and date. That's why we have to send here the time and date via a time master or the weather station can also send time and date to synchronize the security module. To read out the event log, we have to send a telegram of one bit information to this object, open event list yeah, with the value one. And then the security module answers with three group addresses yeah, of these three objects here with the name of the event uh, for example, intrusion alarm, here the name of the sensor, uh, so number one, including the text, motion detector kitchen, for example, and the time and the date when this alarm happens. Uh, and via a touch panel or, for example, via a telephone gateway or other devices, you can see here these 14 byte characters. To go backwards or forwards, you have to send here a one bit information. Yeah, and every time we send here the logical one, we go once one information back, one event, and then the security model sends again the according text description to the KNX bus. So here we have <coughs> the communication objects for the setting. Yeah, to set the system internally, then we have to send here a group address with the value one. With the value one, yeah, this is the command. Uh, request go internal set, logical one unset. Here, for example, when we want to use the setting, the delay setting, then we have to send here a group address with the value one. Then we start the delay time, we can leave the building and after the fixed time or with closing the door, the system goes delayed external set. So now when we stay, when we start this delay time, yeah, this object responds with the status, yes, the delay time is active. Yeah, and you can link here group address and show it, for example, on a small LED or something, or switch on a light, so the end user knows, oh, now my delay time is started. So here we have the status messages, for example. Now when the system goes externally set, then we have here the logical one, internally here, or the information, it is externally or internal set, then we have the information. Or to when we want to know the uh, when we want to have the information, if the system is ready to set for external setting, then we can assign here group address and link it maybe with the LED of a rocker. And now when the end user uh, leaves his building, he has a look at his, at his rocker and see okay the LED is green. Now the system is ready for setting. If not, then maybe you have to check okay there's one window open. Here's some information about the setting, the setting confirmation. When we set the system, this communication object it has the value 1 for about 3 seconds and then he goes back to 0. Or now the information when we want to set a system and it was not ready to set, maybe one window was open, yeah, then we get also here this message error during setting. Here are the communication objects uh, about the alarming. 
Yeah, we can assign here group address, link it to a switch actuator and switch on the strobe outside. Yeah, here the siren, siren, I hope you remember, it's time limited, up to three minutes for example. The internal siren yeah, or here uh, detailed information that we have a technical alarm, then you can switch on another siren with another sound for example. Or here for the panic alarm, then you can trigger another things. Yeah. And it is also necessary to reset a security module after an alarm. That's why we have to. Uh, that's why we have here the object reset. Via um, a switch sensor or a touch panel or something, yeah, it's necessary to send here the logical one, yeah, and to reset the security module. Yeah, and then the alarm which is stored inside the security module is deleted, and the system becomes ready to set again. So now here we have our 64 inputs, our 64 zones. So here we have to link the group addresses which comes from our security terminals. Yeah, maximum we have here 64 one-bit information. The logical zero here means the window is closed, no motion. Logical one window is open or maybe there's a motion. Here we can see our 15 uh, communication object for disable groups. Now when you want to disable uh, a group like the group number four, we have to send here a logical one and then all inputs, all zones, which are assigned to the disable group four are disabled. So they make no alarm. Uh, so we can see the status, but they are not a part of the alarm logic. And when a, a group is disabled, he makes really no alarm. So here are the information about the event list when we have a master slave system, yeah, slaves more than two security modules, then we have to use here this group of tracks. And at the end we have here the buzzer, so you can control the buzzer via a standard group address, one or zero, the relay output when you want, and here the scenes. We have our 8-bit scenes. So, and for setting, unsetting, we can call different scenes like you have seen in the ATS parameter. So, here is a small typical installation with KNX and security. Um, all other KNX devices like sensors, actuators are not visible here. Yeah, I show here only the KNX devices for security. Like we have at the heart of our KNX installation for security is the security module connected only to KNX. For the alarming, we, have, we are using a switch actuator with four or eight outputs, doesn't matter. Channel A, we have our external siren, yeah, which is time limited. Channel B, we have our strobe, our flashlight yeah, for the alarming outside the building. Channel C, we are using a siren, the so called internal siren, which is installed inside the building. And channel D, E, you can use it, for example, for other sirens, technical sirens or something. So another possibility is to send alarms is when you use the telephone gateway. A telephone gateway can send all uh, telephone messages, voice messages via the landline telephone num uh, line, or SMS messages, and also emails. Emails are free of charge in case of an alarm or a fault or something. A uh, telephone gateway can send here emails. Yeah. <clears throat> So, for the power supply, we are using our KNX uninterruptible power supply instead of a standard KNX power supply, uh, which is here supplied via a battery. And so, when we have mains failure, our KNX system still runs. Also, here the 12 volt power supply is also the interruptible one yeah, and supplies here our siren, strobe light, yeah, and some KNX devices like the security module. So in case of a total power failure, no mains, nothing here, our KNX system still runs and we can send also uh, alarms and we can switch on the siren and alarm the people outside the building. We have some KNX devices inside the building. One is here our security terminal uh, MTU, which is installed, for example, nearby the entrance door in the entrance area. Channel A, we have connected our sensor our motion detector, then we have to parameterize this uh, internal uh, protection delayed sensor. Channel B, we have the magnetic read contact at our entrance door. And the next security terminal, which is installed in the distribution board, we have the window in the kitchen or the living room. We have the information from the fault relay from our uninterrupted power supply, or we have technical sensors or panic detectors, some different kind of sensors. 
but for the entrance area it is important that the magnetic read contact and the motion detector in the entrance area is a delayed sensor because you start by pressing here this rocker number 3 your delay time you say I want to external set my building you walk through this motion detector and you close the door so these sensors from your arming device like here your panel or sensor until you leave the building this must be delayed sensors good so far a small overview you see you don't need more components only a switch actuator for alarming the inputs and the hard hour security module and the sensor to make a reset or to internal set or for external set delayed. So now how you have to link the group objects. It's not very complicated. Let's have a look on the left side. Here we have our security module as a terminal, excuse me, security terminal, which is installed in the entrance area, two zones. Here our security terminal with all the other sensors and on the right side we have the security module which can evaluate up to 64 zones. <clears throat> so let's start. At first we have to link via a one bit group address our input A uh, here to the detector input number one and then in the ETS we parameterize input number one uh, is our motion detector. So number B, we have the magnetic read contact, link it via group address with detector input number 2 and, and set the parameter your magnetic read contact delayed sensor. So and so on, next security terminal, also here the status of the input A, link it to an input number 4 for example, uh, input number B to this one, this one and so on. So we need a lot of one bit group addresses. Yeah, that so oh, uh, the security module knows the situation or the status of our inputs. Additionally, you can use also this status yeah, that the window is open or closed to send it to your room thermostat yeah, to go to the anti-freeze mode or something yeah, or for other functionalities. Uh, <clears throat> additionally, we want to monitor also our security terminals if they are still connected to KNX. Yeah? We do it via this communication object device state in operation. Yeah? So we have to link this object with another group address to an input of one of the 64 zones of our security module. Uh, the same with this device, maybe to the input number 12 and this device here to the input number 17. So we monitor maybe someone disconnect the security terminals and after the cyclical time this input here is missing a new telegram and then we make also an alarm. Or when the security terminals have no longer the 12 volt, maybe there's a 12 volt failure, then this device's security terminal sends at one uh, information with the value one and we make here additionally an info an alarm. So back from the security module to security terminal we have we need another group address. This is one group address, link it to the communication object reset. After an alarm we have to make a reset and so we can do it by sending the status reset uh, to all security terminals with the same group address. Okay, no more, a little bit uh, group addresses maybe for the alarm, uh, for the setting and unsetting. For example, with rocker number one, we want to set our system internally. So we have to create another group address, uh, assign it to rocker one and to our security module to the input set unset internal setting unsetting. With the value one, we send a, a set request with the value zero unset request. And we can use the status that is internally set yeah, and link it with another group address to the LEDs yeah, of our rocker one. When we have green LED, then we know the system is unset. Red LED, for example, the system is internal set. <clears throat> so when we want to disable some some zones, yeah, we can do it via the disable group. So we have to send a group address, a one bit from one rocker here to the communication object disable group number one, two, three, or four. Yeah, when you send here the value 1, then the disable group number 1 is completed, disable, and you can open your window uh, in case your system is, for example, internally set. So with broker number 3, we can start our external setting delayed inside the building. Yeah, when you press short, you can use it maybe for switching the light inside your entrance area. And when you press long, yeah, then we send another group address to the object external setting delayed, and so we can start our delay time. Then we have to leave our building and after a fixed time, 60 seconds, or by with closing the door, the system goes external set.
There's also one big group address, uh, which is assigned to a rocker, and the input external setting delayed. So to make a reset, we need one rocker of a sensor or from a panel. So the value must be 1, so we need left and right side of our rocker must send the value 1 and link it here to the input alarming reset. So that's all and now we have a complete intrusion alarm system based on KNX. So I'd like to show it uh, this behavior in a real installation. I have here my demo boards with security modules, security terminals. I have prepared a small visualization with all these communication objects and now I try to show you the behavior. Let's start. One moment. Um, I have to share my desktop. I hope it works. Just give me a second. Uh, I hope you can see my visualization. Uh, our IP network is okay. Good. Thorsten gives me a sign that everything seems to be okay. Good. Here we have the status messages of our security module. Maybe the system is externally set, internally set, ready to set for example. Here we have all objects about the alarming. Here about the telephone gateways we have also another communication objects. We have here the status of the system. Uh, now uh, the setting parameters we can set or unset here via the visualization or we use a sensor. Here we have the text, the 14 byte text about the setting state of our system. This text here is really transmitted via the KNX bus. Here we can have a view, uh, we can uh, see which which sensor is triggered. At the moment you see no sensor is triggered. Yeah, and when, when I open for example one window, yeah, you get automatically here the information, the one bit information, yeah, that the motion detector we have motion and we see here li really as a 14 byte character, okay someone walks through my motion detector. Yeah, what else happens? We see we are not no longer uh, ready for set uh, for setting externally. You see, this is uh, light green. Yeah, when I when I go out of the range of my motion detector, you can see the system is still ready to set yeah, for external and delayed and at once. So then let's start, for example, by doing a technical alarm. Yeah, I make here, for example, a water alarm. Yeah, we have water, for example, in the cellar. What happens? We can see the status here of my input. This is from my security terminal, channel G, J for example. I s see here the text which is transmitted via the KNX bus. I get here also the alarm, a technical alarm as a 14 byte characters. And I see here the name of my sensor. Maximum 40 byte is also transmitted via the KNX bus. This is the one bit information that we have uh, internal alarm. So we switch on the internal siren to give this information or to alarm the people which are inside the building. So no more water, yeah, but after an alarm I have to make a reset. Yeah, you can do it via a uh, push button or by pressing here the button reset. Yeah, and after some seconds we are still ready to set. No more alarm. You see here we are ready to set for setting. No alarm status. Everything is fine. When I want to set my system internally, we are the night, for example, when I go to bed, uh, I press here my good night button, send the one bit information, uh, and now my system is, you can see here, the setting state is internally set. This text is transmitted via KNX bus. You see here the one bit information. We are not external, we are internally set, or here the object internally or externally set. So now internal set means I can open uh, I can walk through a motion detector. For example, my channel A is a, a of my security terminal. Yeah, you see here the st status, my motion detector. I walk through a motion detector. You see the triggered sensor. The text is transmitted via the bus, but I get no alarm because internal set means that only all windows and doors are now monitored, but the motion detector sends the status, yeah, but is not used inside the alarm logic. So, okay, got out of the range of the motion detector and I can unset my system uh, and I'm here still ready to set again and I'm unset. For external setting, I press my button inside the building, I start my delay time. You see here the delay time is active. I open my door, close my door and now when I close the door, if closing the door, 
yeah, I set my system at once. Yeah, and afterwards you can see the status, we are externally set, externally or internally, and the text which is also here transmitted via the KNX bus, yeah, and you can read it maybe on a, your iPhone outside a building or something. And now when someone opens the window, for example, channel B, yeah, intrusion, what happens? At first we see here our input, our circuit, magnetic read contact is uh, dark blue, logical one. We get here the information outside the siren, the logical one, the external, uh, the strobe light and the siren. We get additional information for the telephone gateway for alarming. Yeah, and you see here the text, we have intrusion, the name of the sensor, this was the magnetic grid contact in the kitchen. Yeah, and after your time, for example, three minutes, now here I have used 10 seconds, you can see the siren still goes off, but the strobe light is still on. And now I come at home, uh, open my door, unset my system, uh, and I have to make a reset again to delete this message. So, a small introduction about these security terminals, the security modules. Yeah, the complete alarm logic is inside, you don't need another uh, logic module or something and do not waste time to program your own logic, use the security module we have inside the same alarm logic like in a standard intrusion alarm panel, including our event log, yeah, the event list here for example. We are a one bit object, you can send a telegram, open the event log yeah, and then the security module answers with the 14 bytes in three objects with the last information. The last information was yeah, uh, 4 o'clock, 6 minutes past 4, yeah, I made an alarm reset and we are uh, the possibility to send the one bit information, go previous information, yeah, the security module answered with the uh, event was was before, I unset my system, what was before, uh, I had intrusion with my sensor window in the kitchen. So the last 250 events are stored here inside the event log. The name of the sensor, the event, intrusion and the time of the date when this alarm happens. And so you can go backwards, send again the logical one. You see here, I set my system externally, 4 minutes past 4. Yeah, before I unset my system, yeah, I made the internally setting. Yeah, and so you can go backwards and read out what happens the last 250 events. And all these features are inside included in our, IBUS, in our security module. Good, okay, so far. Our security module, a small yeah, demonstration. Um, yeah, one of the last slides here in Germany, we have uh, yeah, the standard about intrusion alarm or fire detection system, and uh, the institute which certify all these products is the German VDS, VDS Schadenverhütung. And since the last year, we have we have the, or we get the approval, got the approval from this company that we can use also KNX for intrusion alarm systems in residential in private uh, buildings. Yeah. So this is a, a high kind uh, a kind of high certification that now KNX can be also fulfilled these requirements for intrusion in buildings. Good about documentation security we have our product manual about the security terminals, product information and I hope you remember, since some years we have the application manual, which describes the uh, how a security module and terminal works together uh, in buildings. And we have also e-learning module. One of the e-learning module describes the security module. So you can go on our website, follow the link, and you can listen here to this online e-learning module, which is about 10-15 minutes, and you get also more details about KNX and security. Good, so far um, the next webinar will take place on the 18th of June and the topic will be HVAC. Heating, cooling, ventilation, yeah, our sensors, room thermostats, actuator yeah, and so on. Please remember the date. We will send you a timely invitation yeah, uh, some two, one two weeks before. That brings us to the end of the webinar. Okay, have a nice weekend. Goodbye.